Okay. So yeah, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time that you've given us, oh God. We we just commit, um, Lord, um, all the classes today into your mighty hands. We pray that, uh, Lord, you'll continue to lead us, Lord, into all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for everything, Lord, that we have in you. We thank you for everything that has been freely given to us, Lord, in Christ. And, Lord, we we pray, Father God, that um, we would acknowledge, Lord, every good thing that we have received, Father God, salvation and the anointing, the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the new identity, Lord, uh, the inheritance that we have, the authority that we have, Father God, uh, the ongoing relationship and fellowship that we have with you and with God's people. Lord, we, we thank you for each and everything that we have received by faith, oh God. We have received through grace and by faith, oh God. Um, we, we just want to thank you, Master. And uh, yes, Lord, we, are, uh, we acknowledge every good thing that we have received in Christ, Lord, that the living of our life and um, the sharing of our faith may be effective, Father God. We thank you, and uh, we just bless your name right now. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, uh, we've been in Life Skills, we've been studying about... Uh, Last class we looked at creativity, right? Creativity, innovation. Um, so the the difference between creativity and innovation is uh, creativity is something fresh, something new, and most often it is something that is uh, that is not there, not present, right? Um, and it's something original that you uh, that you bring uh, bring forth uh, because of the creativity, uh, because of the the word itself, you know, it says creation, you know, creating something. Um, so it's something new. So whereas innovation is to make changes in something that is already there. So you innovate a process, you innovate, you know, make the, some kind of refine the refining or tweaking of uh, something that is already there. And therefore, you know, that uh, innovation makes it even better. Right? The product becomes even better. The service becomes even better. Uh, or the way you do things becomes uh, even better, you know, when you when you innovate, right? So, um, so that's the thing. Um, today we just uh, understand a little bit about a uh, little more about creativity to understand that, uh, you know, um, the way God has designed us, the way God has designed the brain. You know, we know that uh, we understand very little about the brain, right? We we uh, the scientists say that actually we use a a small a percentage of the brain. You know all the creativity, all the thinking, analysis, and um, everything that goes uh, on. The brain function is actually, you know, it, this this brain is capable of so much more, but we actually use a, a small percentage of it, right? So, uh, so some things to understand about our brains is that uh, our brains like they like complexity and change, right? So uh, complex things uh, which make us uh, curious or uh, puzzles and things like that, the brain actually uh, likes it, right? And change or anything, uh, it the brain likes it, right? So, um, so we are in a way we are designed to be curious or interested in in things that are complex, right? So things that are simple, of course, you know, kind of give us a kind of uh, refreshing and rest, and uh, it helps us to renew and. Uh, recharge and so on you know especially when you look at some when you move away from something complex in order to uh, do something simple something that re doesn't require too much of thinking but the brain uh, is always drawn to things that are complex you know that's how we are so um, so it's fine to indulge in things that are complex complex thinking complex uh, you know solving of things uh, we have been designed for that right and the more we learn we realize that it is easier to learn even more, right? Because uh, the brain already has a foundation, and so to build on that foundation is easy, e right? So um, scientists also say that brains like pattern, organization, and so on. So uh, if there is a category, then you know the learning to can go into different categories uh, in the brain. So um, so it's it's uh, so some more things about the brain that we can see are then that uh, we make assumptions based on existing information or knowledge and and that goes without saying right so our reference point becomes whatever information we, that we have put in there whatever information that we have um you know that we have analyzed and we have um, 
categorized as yes this is true this works so it becomes our reference point we make decisions based on that right so so those are some things uh, there are several other things also like uh, we search for meaning and connection and our brain also likes to play in the sense like puzzles or uh, creativity and and things like that um uh, you know when it comes to a uh, games uh, or learning something in games i i remember um you know teaching my uh, daughter uh, when, when she was in uh, i think she was in i don't know first and second standard now we were learning hindi and uh, i don't know much of hindi <laughs> you know very basic hindi and thankfully that whatever she was learning was very basic and so she was finding it very difficult because we don't speak hindi at home we don't you know listen to anything that is uh, of hindi content so she was finding it very difficult and and on really on the verge of tears right so uh, so we didn't we, we she had to memorize a poem and so uh, we were just finding it difficult she uh, we tried to you know and give the meaning of it figure out the meaning of it and still it was tough so then um, and i said why don't we why don't we just put a tune to it right so we we put a tune for each of these lines in the poem uh, and then uh, and then surprisingly she was able to remember everything right so we just put a tune for every line and like just like a song we made it into a song and then she was able to understand and uh, uh, recall it right memorize it and recall it so uh, our brains like that uh, it works better uh, right and we need to also look after look after you know when we are tired when we are just like how we take care of our physical functions uh, we need to look after our brain function as well so um so the thing is that uh, we do a lot of damage to the brain uh, the the bible talks about that when we indulge in things that are a brain or thinking and and talking about all that process um well the bible says that uh, if it is um, you know something to do with the flesh um first peter 2 and verse uh verse 11 with paul uh, sorry peter warns the believer cautions the believer and he says uh, beloved i beg you as sojourners and as pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul right so any kind of fleshly lust okay so Uh, we know that Galatians five uh, and verse sixteen onwards. If we if we read, we see a whole uh, big list. Right when we th- think about fleshly lust, normally we um, yes, uh, you know the, the something to do with the physical part of us. The you know sh- sexual sin is something that we uh, that is that is there. That is what we think of all the time uh, when we say fleshly lust. But then. There's a whole lot of things. You know, Galatians five talks. Galatians five uh, sixteen uh, onwards talks about that. Gives an entire list of. You know, there are things that are motives. There are things like emotions. There is there is jealousy, and uh, all those things are also fleshly lusts or works of the flesh, and these also um, create some kind of damage. It's war against the soul. so these are things that war against the soul which means that there is a damage uh, that is happening there is a injury that's happening to our emotions to our thoughts and our thought process um when we indulge in it so therefore we are cautioned against it so so since this is a you know creativity innovation and so on is something that is god ordained it's a gift from god and he has created us to be like him right in his image so he is a creative god he um, uh, he creates something fresh new original and we have been uh, created in his image to be like him to imitate him right so um so this thing of course is something that short circuits that process or is a barrier for creativity so you know, paul is, uh, peter is warning us right Uh, do not indulge it's a war against the soul abstain from fleshly lusts because these actually war against the soul okay so um just want to uh, when you look at some of these um things which actually help us in uh, in our creative uh, process or to help with our creativity um well so people of so people who have studied human behavior and so on so they they say that uh, 
something that helps clear our minds is to just you know as soon as you get up in the morning or you know when you're when you're fresh or when you're you know when you're awake sorry um they say you can just write down okay write down whatever is going in your mind okay so they say that it actually cle uh, clears all the mental clutter you know thought fears anxieties everything uh, things that are going on you, know, you just kind of put it on paper write down or things that you're trying to remember i need to do this i need to do this put it on paper because what happens is when you actually write down your kind of it's like kind of unloading right so the, for the brain it's like okay now i've you know i put it there on paper and suppose there's a you know a, a recurring thought a repetitive thought that comes you need to do this you need to do this yeah you just write it down saying i need to do this you know these are 10 things i need to do so it's like downloading it onto uh, onto something and then your brain is free to think of other things again right so they suggest that another thing that to help in creativity and and also to uh, to think clearly to think creatively is also a tool called mind map right so a mind map uh, helps in that is, is is something that they say so um i don't know how many of us have uh, used mind maps but uh, here's a very small video i'll just share that and uh, there's a lot more on mind maps but this is something like a introductory video on mind mapping and so uh, you can you know take a look at that let me just share that right okay Mind mapping was invented by Tony Buzan and the term mind map is a registered trademark of the Buzan organization. Mind mapping is used all over the world in both studying and business situations. To start your mind map, begin by putting an image in the center of the page. This way it's really easy to tell what the subject of the mind map is. In this case, I'm making a mind map about a lady called Chrissy, so I've drawn a picture of her in the middle of the page to start. The next step is to add main branches which organize your ideas about your subject. So I'm doing a mind map about Chrissy and Chrissy's life. So the key branches I've used about her life are her children, her job, her husband Rich, her hobbies, where she lives, and then finally the last branch in the top left corner is her age. Now it's time to add more detail by adding smaller branches, keywords, pictures, and always using color. So if you look in the top right hand corner of the mind map, you can see more detail about the children. Then going around clockwise, you can see more branches added for each category. I'm not going to talk you through all of the details of this mind map, but what I want you to notice is that I've used pictures and keywords throughout, as well as lots of color. Notice that the details are written on top of small branches, which are connected back to the main branches so that there's, there are lines and curves that flow through connecting all of the details together. I've used single keywords and there are no cases where I've used any long sentences or long phrases. It's much easier for the brain to remember single keywords, especially when you use lots of color and pictures. So to summarize, begin with a central image. Use color throughout the whole mind map. Print the single keywords on the branches and make sure those branches are curvy because it looks more interesting and also connected to each other. Also use pictures throughout the whole mind map. Thanks for watching this clip about the Okay, so that was uh, something very simple. Uh, just to give us an idea of uh, what mind map is. So uh, it can be, uh, no, this was about a person. Now, instead of a picture, you can also write name, right? You can write a single, um, like a single word or a couple of words. Um, you can write that and then also 
um, you know, it's it's really helpful for the tasks that you need to do, that we need to do. Maybe the tasks are complex, and it will actually give us clarity. Okay, these are five five things around the task that I need to do, and each of those things also have further, um, you know, further steps to be taken and so on. So this this really helps us to um, and for us to give clarity. And this this was created by this man called Tony Busan, and uh, a lot of people use it, uh, and it's uh, it's it's good, right? So uh, another thing by uh, another way by which we generate ideas is um, okay just a minute sorry okay another way by which we generate ideas is uh, yeah is through um, what we uh, is through brainstorming so it's um, a collective uh, idea and uh, it's it's collective in the sense people are a lot of people are involved and then you uh, maybe a, maybe it's a group of people and then uh, you generate ideas right so there's a lot of create so if you're a one person one individual and you uh, you try to come up with solutions creative solutions you can right there could be maybe five things that you think of and then say that okay these are the ways by which we can do it but then just imagine you have five other people now it's going to be a little more complex or chaotic but there is a process and uh, brainstorming is is what we uh, we can normally use right so there are some um, general uh, or uh, agreeable rules or guidelines for um, brainstorming Okay, so so if if we need to let's say brainstorm about uh, so it's called brainstorming. So um, if we need to you know create some ideas about okay uh, maybe a, an outreach that you want to plan or how to go about it, you know we can have we can sit together and then you know each one can uh, come up with ideas. Okay, so this is a need in this area and. These are ways by which we can reach out, and so, um, so these are, you know, these are the methods, and so on. So, the thing is, the basic thing is this: that everyone is to have a say, right? So, at the point of the initial stage of idea generation, we are not evaluating it. So that's the, you know, some people, some person can say something. Uh, something that you feel is not you know it's it's not going to work right but but don't evaluate the idea and shoot down that idea uh, right then and there right so let the ideas be put out uh, let the ideas be generated right so um so that's the first thing the second thing is that uh, all ideas are equally valued so you're not saying that okay that's a great idea and this is not so um, we are uh, all ideas are valued and also at this point of idea generation there is no criticism right so there is no putting down there is no uh, or elevating so there's no criticism of other people's ideas right so so this is uh, so everyone follows up on an initial idea so we have one thing saying okay this is what this is the problem or uh, this is the uh, topic so everyone can follow that topic right everyone can um, come up with ideas for uh, so solving that particular problem or um, to take care of that particular project what is it that we need to do so everybody comes up with ideas and so on so um, so it can be uh, that is one way right Another way is also, uh, you know, the, maybe there's no topic, there is no project, right? So we gather together as a group. So um, everybody just there's no agenda, but everybody has a thing on. Okay, what can we do together as a group? Maybe it can be something that is as basic and as broad as that, right? What can we do as a group? What can we do as this team? Um, so you know, you can it can be a real free free flow of ideas free flow generation of ideas and these need not be connected this can be totally disconnected right okay so after this initial period of 
brainstorming. Right? And there can be a time of evaluation. So there is open brainstorming where there is no criticism, there is no evaluation. Then we go into a time of uh, evaluating it or assessing the validity of these ideas. Right? Uh, is it is it valid? Is it useful? Uh, can it do it now? So <clears throat> when you um, when you evaluating ideas, then questions are asked, and also there is um, criticism. Right? You can have questions. You can have criticisms uh, of it. So so generally, it is understood. Right? So everybody understands that. Okay, ideas are going to be questioned i there there will be a a critical review of all these uh, ideas right so so what happens is that first of all in the everybody understands okay we will generate ideas we will come up with ideas come up with plans and these are not going to be evaluated at that stage right at the second stage well these will be evaluated these will be you know the, we will be talking about it um and uh, and and we have the freedom to question and uh, critique one another's ideas right it's not the person we are not getting personal about it but it's it's just the idea itself right so we are talking about it so which means that um, you can uh, you know we can analyze it we can investigate and see whether it's really something that can be implemented because idea generation is great you know when we think of many solutions that's great but these things have to be implemented or executed, right? It has to be done. So for it to be done, we need to see whether it's practical. Is it practically possible? Because there are resources involved, like time, money, people maybe, right? So abilities, people's skills and all that. So is it really valid? Can we actually do it, right? Uh, so it needs to be evaluated. Okay, um, so it's important to set aside time because um, uh, time is required. We can't rush brainstorming. We need to set aside ample amount of time for brainstorming, right? So, so that's uh, that's a good way of uh, generating, creating more ideas, right? So, um, when we see, you know, there are uh, many ways of fostering creativity increasing creativity so when a when a team is like uh, sitting around and doing this and it becomes part of the team's culture right uh, it could be a ministry team it could be a you know a work uh, maybe in a work setting your team and and even in a home setting right you you think about it and you you know see if it's done you know it can be done uh, for planning and everything so we see that there's a lot of a um, lot of creativity right and it it um, actually uh, helps in generating things, uh, generating ideas, or bringing out um, creative ideas, and and so this really helps solve cha solve problems and bring solution to challenges. Now, as we are studying this in the context of ministry, we can really use this. We can really put to good use uh, because we know that there are. You know many challenges, and we can also add to this um, the whole aspect of hearing from God, right? Even as we generate ideas, we can hear from God. You know what is God saying? And uh, well, God speaks and to you know individuals, and uh, so so we can actually you know take it to another level, saying, okay, what is God saying? And we'd be surprised when well these all these ideas can flow together. You know, we evaluate it uh, and we put it together, and this all these ideas of our one is connected to another, right? So one person shares the idea, and then the other one is connected to the other, and uh, and so it's amazing. That's how you know word of knowledge works, right? And the prophetic and so on. So where there it is a piece of information, but someone else has another piece, right, of information that when you put that together, then there is even more effectiveness and so on right so that helps some people say <clears throat> in order to increase creativity you know personally you can doodle or draw right take a pen and this pencil just keep drawing um, um, you know what's what's coming to your mind uh, they say that that helps uh, creativity 
Uh, and also uh, another thing that um, the people say helps creativity is to uh, change the physical environment that you're in. Okay, so let's say you want some ideas, you want to, um, you know, you want to see, okay, how can I, you know, how can I plan things better? I want to, I want some mind space for analyzing things. You know, try changing the physical environment. Okay, try moving from there to elsewhere. Maybe a place which is quiet. For some people, you know, they need a place which is not quiet. Um, but try that. Try a change in environment, and uh, that could help in in even more, you know, ideas being generated. Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next thing, which is critical thinking. So we are looking at cr creativity and critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? Now this is uh, again as an overflow of creativity or and as an overflow of that whole process of creativity and generating ideas through even brainstorming now critical thinking is something that is uh, that is useful okay so what is critical thinking it is the analysis and evaluation of ideas and information right so we an analyze it whatever ideas are there whatever information is there why do we analyze it so that we can form a uh, very informed we can make an informed decision or come to an informed conclusion right so we analyze and so um this is why do we call it critical thinking because you are analyzing it in an unbiased manner right so you analyze things see we all do have certain biases right um what do we say like a bias what do we mean by a bias it's a pre-decided thought Right or pre uh, predetermined thing, right? Um, this bias could be uh, could be a race. It could be a bias based on language people speak. It could be a bias on you know whatever it is you know based on and a bias meaning you already decided okay this person speaking this kind of a coming from this kind of a place. Um, like Philip asked, right? I think it was Philip, one of the disciples. He asked that. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Right. So it was known that the people in Nazareth can are are you know uh, are, are probably you know they have a different kind of a reputation. So he asked that question, you know, about Jesus of Nazareth. You know, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So so like that, you know, it was a it was a it was a um, maybe a geographical or an uh, ethnic bias, right? People living in a certain area of certain ethnicity, and you have a, you have a pre-decided thing, notion about it. Okay, um, you know, all the you know people from north are like this, people from east are like this, um, you know, and so on. So it's a we have those biases, but to think critically, we need to actually think in an objective manner uh, and letting go of those biases. Right. Okay. So here are some principles, and I'm just going to go through it uh, quickly. Some steps, some things, principles. So first thing is to gather information. So gather complete information on on anything that you are wanting to solve or anything that you are analyzing. Right. So we're saying, okay, um, okay, is it um, is it safe to go on the roads because it's been raining? Right. Uh, so you gather information. Now we may not be able to gather everything, but we it can be a complete information, but it may not be all the information because it's impossible, right? So get, try and gather the complete information, understand and define all the terms and you know, all the words that we that are used in in gathering the information. There are there are some terms there. Understand it. What are those terms? Understand and define all those words. Um, we we also need to question. So you see the. The process itself is actually thought through or thought of. Now question the methods by which the facts are derived. OK, so you get the information. They're saying, OK, this place is uh, you know, completely, uh, let's say, uh, this road is flooded. And you watch a video. OK, so we need to, we need to question the method by which this fact uh, is derived. OK, so what's, uh, uh, let's say, how old is that video? Right? Is that video, sometimes you know, people post on social media. Last year's video, you know, it could be five years back, but it, it's posted afresh, right? So every time there's something close to that event is happening, all those related videos videos are you know, forwarded, and so you question the method, you know, uh, by which these facts are derived. So uh, question the conclusions also, okay? So based on this fact, 
that this based on this video or these videos you have actually decided that yes you know it is the roads are it's not possible to go on these roads so you question the conclusion okay you concluded like this but is it really factual is it really is it really something you know if not um so, you, so questioning the con questioning the conclusion can be like this okay so you're saying can't go on road so is there uh, any other mode of transport by which you can go right does that mean that you cannot travel at all so if the con if the conclusion is we cannot travel because the roads are flooded so is it uh, is it absolutely based on the fact that okay you cannot travel at all is that the conclusion or are there other modes of travel by which you can so then maybe we come to the conclusion no you cannot travel by bike because the height of water is too much but you can certainly travel by public transport <clears throat> like a bus or maybe a bigger vehicle because uh, the water is not uh, doesn't do any damage or it doesn't hinder the transport right so in all this look for hidden assumptions and biases is there a hidden assumption there are we assuming something what does it mean to assume to assume means that you're not going by the facts <clears throat> you're not going by you know the truth we have i've assumed that certain things you know i've assumed that um you know let's say for example even using that same example i've assumed that uh, one cannot travel at all right or i could have a bias i could have a bias about a certain region you know for example uh, you know from my house to the bible college there is a one one place where it's always flooded like there is always water and it's uh, there's a railway track which goes on top of that and that place is a low lying area that's always flooded and always there is traffic congestion <clears throat> i'm sorry so there is always traffic congestion so is that a bias that i'm using think about it like examine the source of facts that's a very important thing because now especially <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry in today's uh, um, today's world we need to examine the source of the facts source of the facts meaning where did you get this information right is it from a news channel okay which news channel right when did they send it out uh, so we need to verify the facts because a lot of the things are <clears throat> some of the videos i'm sure you know about um, deep fake videos right so i, I remember watching uh, uh, this was a video and uh, about a public uh, public speech right by uh, a president of an african nation and so they're saying that um, and in that video he's not able to pronounce a particular word right and um, so the thing is uh, you know everyone is laughing about it and on all that and then we find out that it it's it's actually a mix of uh, well <clears throat> there was something similar but it was not as funny or as uh, you know uh, uh, blatant as the video made it to be right so uh, there was a mix of other uh, other sound also other audio in that video right? so something like that so you examine the source of facts and uh, another uh, thing is don't expect all of the answers <clears throat> because some things well we may not get the answer right away we may not as we are you know critically thinking and trying to solve we may not get the answer right away we may not get the solution uh, right away it could be you know, so don't expect all of the answers even when we are you know uh, ex examining uh, things don't expect all of the answers um examine the big picture right so what does that mean that means that uh, you know why are we doing this because many times when we get into the process when we get into the details of the process we forget why we are doing this in the first place right so for example if you are studying about creativity and critical thinking and you know we need to ask ourselves why am i learning this in this subject called life skill right sometimes we forget right we get so deep into the subject get so deep into the content and then we forget oh, why am i actually studying this and then you realize that okay it is a subject life skill and it is a skill which is actually applicable which is useful 
for me in daily life, whether it's ministry, whether it's uh, as a working professional, or uh, you know, in so many uh, avenues, this is a skill which will be useful. So that is why I'm studying it. And so, uh, and also the bigger picture of okay, <clears throat> you know, why is it part of a Bible college course? You know, because it's for training people uh, for ministry or to to um, to live um, a deeper life um, as believers you know, and so on. So this is this part of it to add to the skill. Right. So, so things like that. So always examine the big picture, right? Examine multiple cause and effect. So that means that, you know, if this is the effect, what is the cause of it? Or if we take this cause of action, what will be the effect, right? So examine all that, right? Many times, uh, you know, okay, this we, we come up with some uh, solutions and then. And then we see, okay, this is sounding nice, so let me do it, right? But examine the effect of it. Okay, if I take the step, right, as a team, as an organization, if I if we are taking this step, how will it affect us, or what will the effect of this decision be? Effect of this process be in the short term, uh, in the immediate, in the long term, right? In the long term, meaning you know, a year from now, you know, will this have some far-reaching effects? Right. Um, watch for thought stoppers. You know, things that actually block uh, thinking or block those ideas. Um, watch out for those thought stoppers, and also understand your own biases and um, values. Right. So, because that influences the thinking process. So, we need to be careful. You know, the group might have a bias, but then we personally or individually might have a bias, and that could hamper or hinder the um, process. Right. Okay. So, any any thoughts here? Any questions here before we move on? Okay. I think at all. Okay. Pastor, uh, yes. can you hear me, Pastor? Uh, yes, sir, Chaya. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Pastor, sometime while praying, you know, we see some picture or any created things, like any creativity which mm. is related to us. And mm. when we are praying and we see that picture again yeah. and again, and then when we make that, uh, when we try to make it, we will see uh, there is everything is uh, uh, whatever we required it is there and we make it and we will uh, we will make something what we have seen so what we will understand with this kind of situation pastor mm. so uh, when you say picture uh, it's, a, it's about a situation it's about a solution yeah. for a problem no, 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 Pastor. It is related our art. We see some painting or oh, art. Is it okay? Okay, yeah. fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Or uh, something we which is related, uh, related mm. to art. Whatever we create, no, which will be like a craft thing, which is related to art. Right. So those kind of thing when we see, right. and then we uh, then we remember that we have seen this. Let's try to make that, and okay. we will be able to make it. Okay. And it looks nice. So what we will understand with this, why we have made this picture and all, how mm. I will know that? And okay. Like, uh, is it uh, God is telling us to that uh, to come to that area? Is it calling or something, Pastor? Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so you, you just you you're, what you're saying is okay. You see something visual and you translate it into art, and yes. because. You're gifted in you know, maybe you know, painting or sculpture, whatever, mm -hmm. and you do that. So it depends, right? So, um, yeah. well, God can give ideas, and God can um, give a, a particular course of action and uh, a solution through those um, things. Or, or you, you can it, it can be something very therapeutic as well. You know, okay. uh, something that brings about uh, you know brings about a sense of peace, and you're mm -hmm. able to ad admire that, and it brings about a sense of uh, I don't know. Sometimes you see those paintings and art, and uh, kind of it draws you. You know, it may be about nature or something. It just and uh, you know you come to a pause and you're so refreshed by just by looking at yes. some of those, and you spend you know a lot of time just looking at it and just refreshing. Right. So, okay. so it could be any of that also, and okay. also 
it can be something prophetic in nature where God wants to bring a solution. It may not be for you, but it could be for others who who see it, right? And um, yeah, I've also heard of um, yeah uh, this particular testimony that was shared uh, in a church that um, yeah this person who walked into church and then saw this uh, prophetic art which was made and and that brought a lot of um, healing and recommitment um, uh, to that person. Like recommitment to you know the uh, to the Lord you know because she had actually uh, she was angry with God and she had actually run away from God and this, the plan purposes but then this one thing caught her attention and brought back because it was something to do with the past and and so on so yes, yes. Uh, it can be yeah sure Pastor I want to share something can I yeah uh, maybe. Uh, Okay, we just have about five minutes. Can we just move on to the next topic, and then sure, maybe Pastor. you can you can even put on the chat, uh, Chaya, yeah, so we can sure, all Pastor. we can all see that, right? Okay, okay. okay Pastor. Thank no you. Problem. Thank yeah, you. Sure. Most welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we move on to the next topic, which is uh, our next chapter, which is team decision making. Okay. So, decision making. Uh, all of us we make lots of decisions during the day yes or no yeah so we have lots of thoughts we have lots of ideas we have we make a lot of decisions and some of these decisions are made um, consciously where we you know where we have to look at the pros and cons what is the plus what is the minus uh, we spend some time but some decisions are very split second you know these are maybe not very critical decisions okay what to eat you know where to go uh, you know what to wear maybe not very critical decisions we we make decisions all the time right so uh, it's the act of choosing you have a couple of options Two or three options we we choose what is the best so we make uh, decisions all the time and throughout the day right so but when it comes to problem solving right we have to choose between okay uh, solutions the best solution the best um, way to solve a particular problem right so um, we we make those decisions and then we make those decisions individually we also make it collectively like as a, as a team, and then when we work together as a team, then uh, collectively there's a collective decision making that needs to be done, right? So, um, so we make these decisions in a, you know we're talking about a purely a physical um, or a mental way of doing it. It's sometimes it's the intuition, right? So it's an intuitive process and intuitive decision making because you're saying, okay, this is what I this is what I feel. Okay, so um, this is what I sense. So this is what I feel. You know, it's a gut feel, right? Deep within, there's a sense. You know, this, I, I want to do this, right? So we call it intuition. Right? So it means um, this is what you sense. You're not able to really put a finger on it, and rationally, well, you've not thought through it, but you go with the gut feel. You know, deep inside, you feel it. So. Uh, when you look at it uh, purely from a you know psychological point of view, as, you know, there is a uh, it comes because of your uh, our values, our learnings, our our past experiences, right? So we've learned something. There's a there's a knowledge. There is also information. Like processed information is knowledge, right? So there is information. There is knowledge. There is also the values, right? So what you value most, right? Maybe it's things like hard work, truth, integrity, punctuality, and so on. So these are these values that you have, you know, as a person and as a believer. There's values you esteem the word of God and you reverence God, and you know, uh, you want to live righteously, and, and all these values are there. And also our past experiences, you know, experience through whatever we've experienced. And so, so all this forms a you know what uh, what we would popularly call as you know I, it's a gut feel you know, i feel deep inside right it's uh, this is what you perceive right so um so this is uh, this is something now we need to examine that right because a gut feel could also come because of some past experience which has not been very very uh, uh you know very um healthy or it could have been painful 
uh, it was not a pleasant experience it was an unpleasant experience so every time you know we are thinking about decision in that particular area right so we we hold back like for example uh, i think uh, very early on you know i had a very bad experience in a in a singing competition right? so what happened was um, i i i kind of signed up for it and then this is the first time actually i'm you know doing this i, I signed up for it and it was uh, you know, with the guitar and I was singing. So, so what happened was, um, uh, I, uh, so uh, you know, it was very early days, right? So in in school and so the guitar, uh, they said that okay, the the school has a guitar, so you can actually use that. So I said fine. So I practice on, you know, at home the song on at, at my guitar at home, and then I just went right. I said okay, I'll sing it. So on the day of the competition, I went and I. And I went and I, uh, you know, the same song, the same chords, just played on the guitar. But the guitar was tuned so high, right? So uh, it was like tuned maybe three times, whatever. Uh, it was a higher octave altogether. So the song, you know, I knew that to how to play that song only in those chords. Right? Any other chords, no, I can't sing. So I played that same chords, and it sounded so high that um, you know and. And I, my voice sounded so squeaky, and uh, you know, so the minute I finished it, the guys were making fun of me. Hey, you sounded like a girl, right? So sounded like a girl singing. And I, I looked up and I saw it was you. So it formed a very bad, uh, you know, kind of. It was a very bad experience. So I just gave up singing, gave up playing music for many years. I said I'm never ever going to. You know, uh, publicly sing or uh, perform again, and for many years, I think almost for five or six years, I I would you know whenever I said you know you come you do it, I say no, I don't want. So, an intuition can be formed based on a negative experience, also, right? So, okay, we'll stop here. We have uh, we're almost reached the end of the class, so we will continue next class uh, with the same topic, right? Okay, thank you. God bless.